Good day, I'm Beatrice Estraisen for Group Editors Live. Today's business news is brought to you by Access. Matthew Mattia, Wealth Manager at Graviton Wealth Management, is in studio to speak to us about a view on the RAND. Welcome, Matthew. Thanks, Beatrice. So I'm going to start on the talking on the RAND. It's a question we get asked quite a lot. Where is the RAND headed? But I can tell you, having sit through a lot of presentations from portfolio managers and very smart people, I'll almost say the prediction you need to make is whatever they say, you should do the exact opposite thing. Because that generally tends to happen. I mean, with clients who've moved a lot of money offshore, the clients are always asking, you know, which, which direction is it going? So we never predict. Rather, what you want to try and do is look backwards and understand where the RAND was. So this morning before I came in, I looked at the RAND, it was 17 RAND 60. Now, that's amazing. A couple of months ago, sitting at 19 RAND, where the arms allegations, where it's alleged that we had loaded arms and they were shipped off to Russia, the RAND immediately jumped out. I think its maximum was 19 RAND 78. It's incredibly high. And quite often I find like at these points, clients are often become scared and they want to take their money offshore and it's the exact worst time to do this. And again, you need to understand the influences and factors that impact the RAND are, are multifaceted. It's not just one, it's a lot of factors. Sometimes they're local, sometimes they're offshore. I mean, I've got a chart here, it shows the history of the RAND. It goes back to 2000. Have a look at all those points along. It shows all the major peaks, all the times the RAND is blown out. So we start off back in 2000 with a dot-com bubble. Again, it blew out there. I can tell you, people got terrified. It went from, I think it was 6 Rand 50 to about 12 Rand. It, it halved in value. People got terrified. People moved their money offshore at that point in time. Well, look what happened afterwards. It went through a prolonged period of strength. And it was actually the worst thing you could have done. And again, it's coming back to the point. People tend to do the exact opposite of what they should do. What really drove the Rand over this period is we had a very good Fiscal policy, I think we had Tabu Mbeki, Trevor Manuel, and Titu Mboweni with our monetary policy. We had a, the resources sector was running. China was growing like, like crazy. Now, obviously, when China grows, they need our resources. Our miners do well. 30% of the JC is made up of miners. And when that happens, the RAND strengthens. Then what happens, we get to 2008, the global financial crisis. Again, the RAND blows out. People get terrified. And again, after that, there's a little bit of a strengthening. We then see this continued weakening. And that actually happened throughout the world. It's not just a, a RAND view. Again, both those immediate impacts had nothing to do with South Africa. It was only when the firing of Klantlanene happened, that was the first real impact where it was, it was a domestic issue. And offshore looked at South Africa and they got scared and they started selling the RAND because, because what's going to happen? We then recovered. You see, when Ramaphosa came, Ramaphosa came to power, it was Ramaphoria. The RAND came down to 11 Rand 50. It was crazy. These are just two uh, local events. And actually, and, and that's what I mean when I say, you know, sometimes it's offshore events, sometimes it's local. The RAND mainly is driven by offshore events. Look what happened to COVID. It also blew out. And I can tell you, at that point in time, I had clients, they want to take money off. Whenever you see the RAND blow out, people typically want to take their money offshore. What happened afterwards? It slowly strengthened. And now we've just seen the same thing happen. But obviously, to understand what's recently been impacting the RAND, what happened in 2022, the, the big economic point, uh, talking points in the world were actually, was actually inflation and higher inflation in the US. What happens, the US Fed Jerome Powell starts increasing their rates and we see a strong dollar and it's not just the RAND that, that weakened. It's actually a strong dollar. All currencies against the, uh, against the dollar weakened. And now we're starting to see that slow strengthening. And we actually saw um, inflation numbers from the US coming out last week. They're now below 3%. So we're now starting to see the RAND strengthen again. Because if we see a low US inflation, it means less rate hikes from the Fed. That means uh, less fear in the world and people start coming back to emerging markets and investing in the RAND, the RAND strengthens. At the same time, one of the big impacts we've seen was uh, there was a fear of the BRICS summit. We know the Ukraine war, you know South Africa's got a history with, with Russia, and that there's a fear of our relationship 
and that um, cert certain commentators could suggest that the U.S. could uh, imply give sanctions on us, and if that happens, obviously the rand's going to blow out. But now, with Putin um, having agreed to attend the, Vic, uh, the BRICS summit virtually, we see the rand start to strengthen again. So, all I want to say is, I'm not going to predict where the rand's going to be over the next few months. It's very difficult to tell. However, when you look at the chart, you look at the history, you see these patterns emerging. Where the rand blows out and it slowly starts coming back. And look, we just had a blowout in 1978 with the Russian scandal. It's now slowly starting to come back. I do think that there's always going to be an additional premium until that Ukraine crisis is resolved. There's always going to be a premium because we, if it escalates and we have to choose sides, the rand will blow out. But that you just can't predict that. So that's my view on the RAND, is that just look at the pattern and don't try and make big predictions. And often when we fear most, that's the worst time to move offshore. You know, wait until it gets better. Take your time. At the end of the day, consult a professional. Talk about how much offshore you need in your portfolio. And then let that really be the determinant. And, and don't let fear drive your decisions. Okay. Thank you, Matthew. This business segment is proudly brought to you by Access. Internet your way.